the May 29 presidential inauguration is sacrosanct. Well, those are the words of the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, as he wants those plotting to derail the process, promising that the police, in synergy with other security agencies, will defend the nation's democracy at all costs. Well, that's our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. And of course, the federal government is saying that over 13 trillion naira was spent on subsidy payment in 16 years between 2005 and 2021. Will the income and administration do justice to that or remove the subsidy on petrol completely? We'll seek to find answers on the show this morning. We'll also take a look at some of the headlines on the national dailies. Without the press, where we get an analyst to join us to analyze some of the hot top, some of the headlines. And it's the midweek frenzy edition of the breakfast this morning. I am Maureen. I hope you slept well. Good morning to you. And I am Justin Akadanye. Many thanks for joining us. Uh, indeed, we trust you had a restful uh, night and you are braced up for the day's uh, task ahead. Maureen, I trust you slept well. Oh, I did. Mm. Did you sleep well? Yes, I slept well yesterday, although yesterday I had lots of issues. But uh, uh, after some checks and all, I, I feel a bit better this morning. Thank God you're yeah. better. Yes, I Well, am. it is the midweek frenzy. And our theme for the day is the cost of governance being too mm. high. For the governed and not the governors but isn't that so i mean recently we <laughs> we learned of the hardship allowance for the president the vice president <laughs> the and deputy the governors, governors. Uh, well when i think about it i wonder what hardship they go through at the, the figure was about is it uh, six uh, six hundred and fifteen uh, million or billion but when i, when I think about but when I think about like what hardship, Murray, what hardship do they go through? As many Nigerians are wallowing in, in poverty and uh, the high cost of inflation, uh, I hear that 651.2 million naira hardship allowance uh, was actually spent uh, in this uh, administration in the last eight years. What hardship did they go through? Almost all the expenses are paid for them. It's a good question. Mm. <laughs> so if they are if they are enjoying 651.2 million naira. Okay, what allowance was given to the average Nigerian in the past eight years? Uh, they are grappling with inflation and they have to do with just about um, a meager 30,000 naira minimum wage. Inflation has gone up. Hmm. Inflation hmm. has gone up 22.22%. Yes, that's the latest figure the NPS released for April. And uh, it's the highest in about uh, uh, 17 years in exactly. our nation's history. Exactly. And there's no way if we can move forward, if we do not cut down on wastages. Mm, it is a major problem. Mm. The government, everything about our government in this country is over bloated at all levels. Mm. You find one gov uh, government official with how many aides attached to him and you wonder what are they doing? I mean, just unnecessary, just redundancy costs and all. Why do you need seven, eight, ten, fifteen, whatever aides uh, attached <laughs> to one office? Just one office. Have you even checked what they uh, spend on feeding? You know, it to be alarming. Uh, I remember discussing that uh, on uh, a political show uh, sometime, was it last year or so? I was trying to analyze what uh, the president uh, and his vice spend on feeding annually. If you just look at the figures, it's really crazy. Yeah. What do they get to eat? It's a good question. And the average Nigerian, most of the times, uh, they go to bed with their stomachs empty. Not sure what the next day will hold They're for them. Know. I do remember that one of the presidential um, candidates talked about when he was the governor, how mm -hmm. on a daily basis, he realized on a daily basis that the, the, the chef will cook as if he was going to have a feast on mm -hmm. a daily basis. When he noticed that, he asked, why do you cook this much every day? Is that because, day. well, we suspect, well, I, 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 we suspect you may have some guests, but have you ever seen me bring any guests home? Please cook mm -hmm. for me alone. But that is a situation. And then you find the entourage mm. when a governor is on his way or the mm. deputy or, mm -hmm. or any of uh, mm. the government officials, the entourage is unbelievable. And when they travel for, uh, you know, for official duties, even outside the country, you can imagine that the, the hotel they pay for all of them, the uh, the per diem, the local, and um, of course the travel allowances that they get to enjoy. If you look at what they spend on each official trip, it is really alarming, Maureen. I interviewed uh, 
uh, an elder statesman uh, mm. last year, and he told me that uh, on one of his trips to, I think it was the UK, mm. um, he at the hotel he he asked for the cheapest uh, possible space he could get, and they looked at him funny. <laughs> Are you sure you're from Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you used to be in the government in Nigeria? Because oh, here they, 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 the they want the best. They take the, the most expensive suites and, 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 and they take a lot at once, so many of them at once. Mm. And here you are asking for the cheapest space. Are you sure you used to be in government in Nigeria? And Maureen, the thing is that they don't, I don't know if they even fail to realize that uh, of all of this, uh, it is being paid by taxpayers, but we are the ones feeding them. We are the ones um, funding their lifestyle, and uh, they don't really realize that uh, the essence of governance in the first instance is, you know, to serve. I'm seeing wonderful figures here, wonderful in quotes. Uh, let me see if I can just reel out some Please of them. Please reel them out. Okay, President Mohamed Buhari and Vice President Yemi Oshibaju, uh, that's as at uh, 2022, uh, they plan to spend 3.57 billion naira on feeding and uh, travel expenses. That's the details of the 2022 budget. The amount is the highest since uh, Mr. Buhari assumed office. Uh, that's according to reviews that were 3. done. 3.7 billion. 3.57 billion naira. Uh, you know, that's what they were supposed to expend mm -hmm. you know, for feeding, feeding. and uh, travel allowance for one year, the mm -hmm. president and his vice. Okay, the presidential travels uh, go up, uh, or was supposed to go up at 2.3 billion for travels. Then 775.6 million for local trips and 1.5 billion there for international journeys. You can imagine the president proposed 2.6 billion of the amount for his office, while 778 million was set aside for the vice president's um, office. Look at the standard. Simply mind blowing. Very, we, we, very mind blowing. We, we read these things and we talk about them and we, we lament, you mm. know, but it doesn't change. That is the problem. I mean, you listen to radio on a daily, you watch television stations, yeah. Nigerians are lamenting. And then it just doesn't change, it gets worse. And begin to ask, do they even listen? They don't listen. They disconnect we'll between the leaders and the led. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that disconnect is so deep and so wide. And mm -hmm. it keeps getting wider and wider and wider. And then you ask yourself, why do people get into office without, without the ambition? Mm -hmm to leave their footprints in the sands of time t without the ambition to have history mm. write them beautifully. Mm. I don't understand it. They don't realize because they don't understand that the essence of uh, leadership is uh, service. Uh, someone once said that we, we don't even have leaders in the country. What we have are just uh, rulers who don't understand that uh, they are the ones who are the servants. They should be serving the the Nigerians who voted them in in the first place, mm. but they, they just want to get there. They don't care about, uh, like you said, leaving their, uh, their footprint on the sands of time, but that's not their business. They just want to amass all the wealth uh, that they can. Uh, so when they leave office, uh, you know, they would never suffer again. It is, I think it, is, it was uh, the former president, Yaradua, okay. that said he was, a, he was going to be the seventh leader. Mm. He was a lovely man, wasn't he? That's how it should be. That's he was, the essence. He was a lovely you man. Know, how many of our, how many of our, our, our you know, elected um, um, officials would actually go on um, trains or would go on uh, public? Because these are the things you find in saner climes in the Western yeah. world. You see uh, members of parliament and boarded trains and uh, even walking on the street, but they're not in Nigeria here. You'd have to go the paraphernalia mm -hmm. of uh, security attaches to you because uh, you don't feel free because uh, you feel that... Uh, your ego should be massaged as it were. Causing public nuisance. Mm -hmm. You see how they go on the road. Mm. Almost as if every other person should disappear as they appear. Mm. You know, disappear, this move. And it's so, you know, when you see that, I wonder what is all this? How did we become like this? I wonder how, I mean, it's, always, it's always been like that, you know. Uh, uh, you know, incidentally, this conversation was one uh, I was having with a driver this morning uh, coming to the office, and he was um, asking a question. Is there something really different in us um, blacks? Uh, is it in our DNA, or is it a genetic issue that uh, we ordinarily don't want to serve? We're just about uh, wanting our egos to be massaged, while uh, if you did that to the average um, uh, guy in Europe or the white man in Europe would like you're patronizing him. But Nigerians who just want, want to have the office, want to have mm. the ego and uh, just uh, roll out, uh, you know, orders and people just, uh, you know, dancing to their beck and call. Well, I, 
I used to think that uh, that way, ask such questions myself, when you see some of the things. But then when you remember people like Nelson Mandela. Mm, well, true. Yeah, when you remember people like Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu, yeah. When you remember people like, you know, some people that, he, as this man I told you I interviewed last mm. year, he is uh, uh, Mr. Defouye. I interviewed mm -hmm. him last year. And he told me how when he traveled, he looked for the cheapest hotel, uh, the cheapest space in the hotel where he went to. So there are a few of our a people scattered men. here mm. and there, still a few good men mm. scattered here and there. But the sad thing is how then do we throw our pies it? that we find ourselves every time, almost every time, mm. uh, having the worst of us mm. leading us. Yes. The worst of us in this, you know, on the seat of leadership. The Is worst of us making mm. policies for us. The worst of us deciding the mm. fate of millions of shouldn't, the rest of shouldn't, us. Uh, 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 shouldn't we be the ones to blame here? Because at the end of the... Oh, okay, well, I wouldn't blame it on the, on the electorate because at the end of the... Most of the times, uh, it is still arguable if uh, they are... Their votes uh, counted, right? That's another question because ordinarily, would you just... Or some people would because uh, they'll be influenced or bought over with some little peanuts and that uh, they'll just uh, sell or sabotage the future for the next four to eight years. But ordinarily, when you know that uh, this set of people that you are electing actually have the say over what happens, over what policies are made, uh, you'd, you should think twice before you even vote people that you don't really trust, people you know that cannot deliver, who have questionable characters. Yeah, well, it's been said that the people deserve the leadership they get. Um, it, it is quite sad, a reality for us here, mm. because, you know, I did ask the question during Ballot 23, mm. those who manipulated the figures during mm. the elections, mm. as, as you rightly yes. uh, alluded to, they are from amongst us. Those who so carried uh, machetes and guns and whatever mm. they carried to dis disperse people who came to vote, to maim people and to hurt people and to kill people mm. during those elections, they are amongst us. Um, the president himself, else? yeah, the president himself, as, main, as much as, um, you know, uh, he's been accused of this and that, he was not on the streets carrying these things out. No. Um, but many people went out there to carry these things out. Mm. We had um, the, the woman in, um, is it Enugu? Oti. Okay. okay. Who yes. stood out? Yes, uh, the, the wreck. Yeah, was in, uh, she that stood was in out. Abia State. Yeah, Abia State. She mm. stood out. Unfortunately, we only have just pockets of them in different, just pockets. Mm. Majority of us mm. just don't seem to give a hoot. Mm. We're more concerned about the little gains we get immediately. And uh, ironically, Maureen, these are the same poor people who should ordinarily know better. We always blame um, the rich and those, uh, those who are leading us. But then again, you find that, that they are, it's not the rich people that come to the streets with machetes and mm -hmm. the guns. And, uh, you know, it's the hoodlums. It's the poor people who don't really have so much, you know, to, they don't even have savings. They don't even know where the next meal will come from. And at the end of the day, they should have even realized in the first place that uh, if they did this, what would happen? I mean, no, if you, it's, not, it was, it's not just the hoodlums. Mm -hmm. And you can't even blame the hoodlums because they don't know better. Okay. If they knew better, they wouldn't the be hoodlums in the first place. Hoodlums. They wouldn't be hoodlums in the first place if they knew better. Mm. But you had people in the academia who perpetrated some of these things. You had people mm, in different true. sectors who mm. were ad hoc staff uh, during the elections, who were agents, who mm. messed things up. Oh. And so it's just a sad reality. But that's why the box stops at the doorsteps of the leader. If mm. you have a good leader, he begins to direct the people mm. in the right channel and things begin to change from there. So it all begins and ends with leadership mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, aside from this uh, hardship uh, allowance that we talked about, just the other day we were talking about uh, our excessive borrowings and um, the loans that uh, we are getting from, um, you know, from the West and all of that. Yeah. We don't know that we are actually just uh, sabotaging the future of uh, not just our children, but our children's children, because at the end of the day, all those loans and all those burdens will just be on them in the years to come. Because we don't prioritize revenue, we're just thinking about um, expenditure. And most of the time, the, the reason why they borrow those loans are not even... Uh, to uh, not really in sync with the expenditure that they should uh, be made for in the first instance. Like in economics, they'll tell you to uh, short-term funds for short-term uh, uh, um, infrastructure or uh, uh, usage, then long-term for long-term um, uh, capital expenditure. But that's mm -hmm. not what we see. They borrow this money and the monies are diverted and the infrastructural needs of the people 
and learn from them. And even some of the so-called things, project mm -hmm. that they claim to... Yesterday, I interviewed the very honorable Mazi. Mm. Sam mm. Oh, mm. and some of the things he explained to us uh, yesterday quite alarming. Uh, money is borrowed for the train, for instance. Mm. Uh, some of them are not working, <laughs> and then you have to service the interest. You have to pay the interest. Yes, the, when the, even the, the interest. The were, for you. Yes, the, we've not even that talked about the, not even the, the, the loan itself. The capital. It's the, it's the interest no. that you service <laughs> yearly as the oh. years go by. Because you find out that. that uh, 17 years ago or so, we had uh, some refunds, uh, you know, for the country, and everyone was like, uh, heave the self relief, maybe thinking that it was Uhuru for the country, but years after that, down to like, look at our debt board, and after we were begging for There seems our to be this, this, uh, this crave, this huge desire, this love for collecting <laughs> loans. We know that governments, there's no government in the world that doesn't collect True. loans, mm. but also there is, the, you could also partner. Mm with some of these countries. Like sure. he was saying, he had suggested that Nigeria partnered with China okay. to build this infrastructure mm -hmm. and then give them some years to recoup, mm -hmm. after which they, they hand over to us. True. Doing that, we're not owing them anything, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're not going to owe them yes. any money yes. to refund. Yes. They collect their money after a period, an agreed period, mm -hmm. and then they leave the, the infrastructure for us. Oh, At the yes. end of the day, we get the service and we get the mm -hmm. infrastructure completely. But no, some people would rather go collect these loans collect for loans. reasons best known so to them. So uh, just for a project that they never intended you know, to do in the first instance. They collect these loans and they say it's for uh, repairs of uh, some major federal roads. At the end of the day, for 10, 15 years, Yes, we're still talking about those roads. Oh, well. Let's move on to the top trending. The Nigerian Army rewards 58 officers with brand new bicycles for <laughs> hard work. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> when I saw the ones, I was excited. And then I saw bicycles. I said, OK. Mm, okay, maybe okay. we are trying to do, uh, uh, trying to go with uh, the whole uh, <laughs> <laughs> climate change. Keep fit. Uh, keep fit and uh, so we don't uh, burn uh, unnecessary uh, fuel, so we don't pollute our environment. Oh, here, so yeah, there you have it. There, there you have the pictures the of picture. the, the bicycles. Wow. I wonder why bicycles in the first place. Is it for exercising? Well, I wish we had an army officer <laughs> who would explain better. Uh, I wouldn't want to speak too much on that because mm -hmm. we do not understand the internal workings uh, of yeah. the military yeah. uh, to us to know why they would prefer to reward them with bicycles. bicycles. All right, so the second top trend then is Shemu Kuti secretly moved to Yaba Magistrate Court for arraignment. Well, we understand that the musicians, uh, lawyers, we are not notified and uh, suggestions of an attempt to get back at the musician is rife in the air. The latest I heard was that he, he, he was taken to his home and for, the home was searched. Mm -hmm. And I'd also heard that he was not allowed to get food. Oh, wow. um, I, I don't know the details of that, but those were some of the things uh, in the news this mm -hmm. morning. Well, I just, uh, what can I really say about him, Shogu Kuti? I just uh, hope uh, the justice uh, would be uh, served and seem to have been served. But at the end of the day, I don't want to see or start hearing things uh, like uh, victimization, uh, or the police trying to prove or make some sort of um, uh, point. Uh, He's been show. granted bail, mm. uh, though the police said they would like to have him for 21 more days so that they can conclude their investigations. Do but they the need judge him in said jail no. For 21 days before uh, they the can the do judge said no. For the eight hours, you should be yeah, done with this, that and, and 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 that's it. And uh, so many things up there. Uh, I even heard that they said that the policeman that was slapped because mm. I think he was requested for, but the police had said that uh, he he was in coma as a result of the slap. Coma. So, yeah. Well, this is the case in court. So we we'll just wait and see how all of this plays out. Um, mm. Sean should not have slapped a uniformed no. military What's man. About his a policeman, I beg your pardon, True. should yeah. not have slapped him. Uh, however, we want to see justice done because uh, he is one of us. Uh, mm -hmm. We've seen the police hurt Nigerians too. Mm. Um, 
and, but I, I must say that the police is also beginning to clean out its closet. They have some to, of those have who have been found, yeah, yes, those some of those officers who have been found wanting mm -hmm. in recent times have been dealt with accordingly okay. by the Nigerian police force. Mm -hmm. So I, I imagine they're also trying to say we're doing our part. Mm -hmm. Do your part as the people mm. so that there will be a balance. It has to be, uh, ordinarily, the, the relationship between the police and the citizenry should be um, a symbiotic one because yeah. uh, they live amongst the people. They understand what the people go through. They understand the hardship. They uh, go to the same market. So they should even know of each side that is, uh, knows uh, where uh, the shoes uh, pinch. So at the end of the day, uh, there should be some sort of a uh, 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 relationship and some sort of a uh, uh, what's the word right now, you know, uh, rapport between uh, both some sides. But at the end of the day, if you look at it, uh, the police needs the people, and the people also need the police. Yeah, there, 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 there are some good cops out there. Mm. Really, there are. I, I keep saying that. I've said it repeatedly. There are really some good, good cops out there. I've met lovely police people out there who have been of great help. Great gentlemen they mm. are. You know, so there are the good ones, there are the bad ones, and I imagine that they are trying to make sure that uh, the bad ones who give have given them bad names mm. would be removed from the, from the system, so that, as you said, the confidence will be restored. Will be restored because, as it stands today, most Nigerians do not consider them policemen. They don't even friend. trust them. They don't even say, they, that, that, I don't know why we got that slogan in the first place. The police is your friend, but most Nigerians don't see it that way. I do not see it that way. Mm. Okay, well, it's time for us to take the weather report. We'll come back to take a look at the headlines on some of the dailies. Do stay with us.